Well, good morning and welcome to day 17 of 21 days of prayer. If we haven't met yet, my name is Justin and I'm one of the pastors here at Impact City Church in Pataskala, Ohio. Man, I'm so glad that you're joining us this morning. Uh, just, man, as a step of faith, if you're excited to be here, can you just throw up maybe some thumbs or some hearts uh, just to get us started? This is meant to be engaging and interactive. This is not a teaching video. This is a gathering of God's people. We're here to encourage one another, to pray for one another, and most importantly, to glorify God. So if you're excited to be here this morning, throw up some hearts, throw up some uh, some likes. We're going to get started. I'm going to start with a word of prayer. We're going to take a time of encouragement in God's word, and then we'll uh, close up by praying for you. So Heavenly Father, Lord, we just lift up this time to you. I'm so grateful to have people in my life who love you and are devoting their life to you. It's so encouragement to be part of a church and to be the church, to be your hands and feet, to be ambassadors for Christ, to be a light to this world, to be the salt to this earth. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us, not only would we know you better today, but we would reflect you better today. Lord, I pray that whatever is going on in our life, that we could put our full faith and trust in you. Lord, that we take one step today in our journey of faith, whether it's getting in your word, spending time with you, being the church, serving your people, loving people the way you love us. Lord, help us to make today um, a day that you have made. Lord, I pray that your grace and mercy is upon all of us. And Lord, I just pray that our time together is meaningful, it's helpful, that each person listening in and watching would have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive the truth. And those who know the truth will forever be changed. In Jesus' name, can I get a big old amen? If you're feeling frisky, give me a hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, Jesus. It's 7 a.m. and Pastor Justin's had too much coffee, really just one cup, but... When you're fasting and you're limiting your caffeine, one's enough. <laughs> well, I love seeing all my buddies jumping on here. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. And uh, let's set a record. Let's make this the most engaging video of all time for 21 Days of Prayer. That means you have to be here with me, uh, encouraging me, encouraging one another. Don't just watch. Come on. This is not a spectator church. Come on, this is a all-in kind of a church, and uh, I love you guys for it. Today, I want to talk about trust issues. I'm going to try something. I think I have a poll here. Let's see if I can figure this out. Yeah, I'm going to create the poll. Oh, go back, go back, go back. Launch the poll. All right, I just launched the poll. I think, can you see it right here on the live? Here's, can you anybody see it? Let me know. I think the poll is this. Do I have trust issues? I already know the answer to trust issues. It's 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 yes. But I want to know, do you have a little bit or a lot of bit of trust issues? Because <laughs> there's, there's always things in this life that we're skeptical about, right? If you don't think you have any trust issues, then I want you to pick up every telemarketer's call from here on out. And every time someone calls you from the Social Security Department, I want you to go ahead and just give them all your personal information. Right? <laughs> no, we all got a little bit of skepticism in our life. We got some trust issues. You know, you guys don't see the poll? Man, I tried to do something cool, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll find it out next time. But the reason that we have trust issues is, I mean, the list is long, but usually somewhere along the line, someone has disappointed us where we had certain expectations and someone came up short or someone uh, took advantage of us or someone let us down or someone just flat out hurt us, right? We can have uh, trust issues in our relationships because, man, we, uh, you know, we gave someone our best and they gave us their worst or they said they would do something and they didn't or they said they would never do something and yet they did it. Anyway, we can have trust issues with organizations with governments, with schools, even with churches, leaders in this community, we can have trust issues. You know, go ahead and step into a, a city council meeting sometime and hear from some of the people that are struggling with trust issues. But today I want to talk about what does it mean to trust 
in the Lord. And all of us at some point most likely had some skepticism in God. I did. Even if you grew up in the church, even if you went to Bible study every week, I'm sure at some point you had some trust issues like, man, can I really put all of my trust in God? And what does it look like to truly trust God with all of our heart? Not to just believe him that he's real and that he saved me, but to really trust him with every part of our life. I think we have some growth. A lot of us have to take some growth steps. Would you agree? Have you ever had to take a a growth step in terms of trusting the Lord? I want to read a passage to you, which is one of the most influential passages in the Bible on my life. It's one that I think about and meditate on and have to tell myself over and over and over again. It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Can someone just throw me up some hearts? If you desire to trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not some of it, but man, you want to give God all of your heart. You want to trust him with all your heart. It says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Now, now either there's a delay or, or no one wants to trust God with all their heart because I didn't see any hearts, right? We're here to trust God with all of our heart, right, church? Come on. That's the goal. Throw me up some hearts. But here's the thing. No one starts there. I've yet to meet someone who is able to trust the Lord with all their heart at first. Oftentimes, we start with seeking God because there's a void in our life, or we seek to understand or get to know God, and and we really begin to decide, do we believe that God is who He says He is, and will He do what He said He's going to do in terms of His death on a cross and payment for our sin? Like That's really the first step. But to truly trust God with all your heart is really a step further than just believing Because it's about trusting that his ways are higher than my ways. That his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. That his will is better than my will. Think about that. Think about your own faith journey. How just believing and trusting God for salvation is much different than trusting God with all of your heart. Because when you trust him with all of your heart, you're really trusting him with everything in your life. You're trusting him in every area. Now, I realize that there's currently 37 people live. I'm sure hundreds will tune in later. But I want you to consider your story, your faith journey for a moment. Each one of us have a unique testimony of how the Lord saved us and redeemed us. We can all remember the moment where we put our trust in Jesus, but really we put our faith in Jesus, right? That our relationship with him by the grace of God, by the faith in Jesus Christ that we were made brand new, that we were a new creation. Now, even though we all have a unique story, I think that our journeys are similar in this way. That at, that, that at one time, we were all lost, but now we're found. We were once blind, but now we can see the truth, right? At one time, we were all broken, but now we are made whole in Christ Jesus. At one time, we were afraid. At one time, we were skeptical. Skeptical? skeptical? (laughs) At one time, we were unsure. But now, we trust in Jesus. Man, praise God that we can trust in Jesus. All right, come on. Here we go. Facebook. Facebook Live, man, it's, it's acting kind of funny this morning, so I'm hoping you guys are here with me. Are you here with me? Someone give me a thumbs up. It's cutting out on me. Okay. Over the years, I've had the blessing to be a part of watching thousands of people take next steps in the relationship with Jesus. 
So when it comes to the discipleship journey, I've played a small part in thousands of people's journey. And I would say I played a larger part, more personal, more of a, in a group setting or one-on-one, -on -one, through Bible studies, grow groups, and just doing life with people, with hundreds of people. And I've played a significant role in terms of really walking, doing life together, you know, locking arms, walking side by side through our faith journey with, with, with a lot fewer. But here's what I've observed in all of those journeys that is similar. It's this, is that no one starts by trusting Jesus with all their heart. It's not where it begins. And if you are just tuning in today and you're really new in your journey with God, I realize that asking you or encouraging you to trust God with everything is a big step. And for you, that may not be your next step. Because the first step in our journey of faith and the discipleship journey of, of truly following and trusting Jesus is that the first thing we have to do is to receive God's love. The first step in every faith journey is for us to understand how much God loves you. How much he loves you. He loved you so much that while we were still sinning, Christ died for you. He loved you so much that he handcrafted you, right? He knows every hair that's on your head. He knows every day that is ordained for your life. He's the author of your life. He, cre he, he loves us so much that he prepared a place for us. That when it's time, he will come and he will bring us to him. He loves you so much. There's nothing that he would allow to get in the way of his love for you. It's unfailing and it's unending. And our first step is to truly allow God's love to permeate our life and to transform us from the inside out. That's step one. Until you know how much God loves you, you really can't continue on this journey of faith. The second step in everyone's journey of faith is to fall in love with Jesus. Until you love Jesus, and there's no way that you'll follow him. If we look at the disciples' life, those that followed him through thick and thin, those that never turned their back on him, well, I mean, they had moments of wavering, we all do, but those that truly lived out the life of a disciple or those that loved Jesus with all their heart. They loved his word. They loved who he was. They loved his character. They truly believed that he was the Christ. He was their Lord. He was their friend. He was their provider. He was their source. He was their creator. And they loved him. And I'm telling you, there are so many Christians who don't love Jesus. There's so many Christians that, that go to church out of duty or read their Bible out of duty or just really have the Christian stamp because they think it's like a like a like uh, like something that is passed down from generation to generation like a family heirloom. That is not what being a follower of Christ is about. You follow Christ because you love him. And I would encourage you this. If you don't truly love Jesus more than anyone else you love on this earth, then let me just tell you, February, the love month, you, you should fall in love with Jesus next month. <laughs> How do you fall in love with Jesus? you got to spend time with Him. you got to spend time in His Word. you got to spend time just talking to Him, just praying with Him, just allowing Him to talk to you and to listen. And if that's a struggle for you, come on, get around other people that genuinely love Jesus. Not just people that go to church, not just people that read the Bible. I'm talking about get around the people that you know love Jesus. That love will be an example to you to really take a next step into how do I love this Jesus who gave it all for me? And take that step of truly loving Jesus because once you fall in love with Jesus, then you'll fall in love with his ways. But too often people jump straight to the do's and the don'ts of Christianity. It's like, well, now that I'm a Christian, now that I'm coming to church, I have to do this, I have to do that, I can't do this, I can't do that. And I'm just telling you, man, we get this, this, these steps out of order because we first have to fall in love with Jesus. And then we have to fellowship with his spirit. The Holy Spirit plays such an important role in the life of a believer. Until we tr truly learn to get to know the Holy Spirit, and as Scripture says, if we live with the Spirit, then we must walk by the Spirit. See, that's really our key to living out the sanctification of Christ. It's with the help of the Holy Spirit 
that we can do God's will. It's with the help of the Holy Spirit that when we read the teachings of Jesus, when we read our Bible, we have understanding. Without the Holy Spirit, we really can't have understanding of God, of, of the ways of God. Right? To do the will of God, we need the Spirit of God alive inside of us. And there are going to be some things in our life that just don't belong. See, the Holy Spirit, He dwells within us, right? We are the temple for the Holy Spirit. So guess what? The Holy Spirit knows all the junk in your life that doesn't belong there. And if and it's through spending time with the Spirit in God's Word that He will do some spring cleaning in our life. He will begin to point out the thoughts that don't belong there, the feelings that don't belong there, right? The habits and the behaviors and all of that junk. The Holy Spirit will begin to convict us of our sin and unrighteousness. And He will say, Come on, let's get rid of it. There's a better way. God's ways are better. Come on, come on, stay on this journey with me. I want to show you a better path. And it's through the help of the Holy Spirit and through the truth of God's Word that we will begin to turn from our life of sin. We will begin to renew our mind. We will begin to cleanse and purify our heart so that we can truly walk in the ways of God. Too often Christians will 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 be pointing to people in the world or other new believers and they'll just start saying, "Hey, if you want to be a Christian, you got to give that up. If you want to be a Christian, you got to do it this way." And let me just tell you, you, there's not a single person that's watching this video that is powerful enough to change anybody. You can't even change yourself. Only by the power and the grace of God can you become transformed through the Holy Spirit and the truth of the Word of God. And it's only by connecting people and pointing people to God and through His Spirit that they can be changed and transformed. And so my encouragement is don't get into the do's and don'ts with people. Just simply help them fall in love with Jesus. Help them understand the importance of spending time with the Holy Spirit. And eventually, the Holy Spirit will do His job to do what only He can do to convict us of our sin and to help us live out a life of righteousness. And then here's the final step in the journey of faith. It's that you make a decision to devote your life to following Jesus and His teachings. And that encompasses everything in the life of a Christian. When you make a decision that I'm going to follow Jesus and all of his teachings, your life will change forever. And you will begin to make a difference in the life of in the lives of people. Because you'll now be a part of the Great Commission. You'll now be a part of making disciples. You'll now be a part of loving people the way Christ would love people. You're now building up the body of Christ. You're now making a difference in this broken world. And so, and when I consider that final step of really making a decision, right? Because it's your choice. God gave us free will. When you make a choice that I want to devote my life to following Jesus and his teachings, that's really when you get to this place in Proverbs chapter 3, where you are ready to trust the Lord with all your heart. You're not going to lean on your own understanding, right? You acknowledge that there's going to be some things in the Word of God that are counter your opinions. They're counter your presuppositions. They're counter how you feel. But you're saying, no, 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 no. I'm trusting the Lord with all my heart. I'm not going to try to figure this all out on my own. But I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to bring revelation to my life. Amen? He says, then we have to acknowledge Him in all of our ways. Meaning that the motive in our life becomes Jesus. Right? We acknowledge that, hey... Jesus should be a part of every day of our life, every decision of our life, right? Every relationship in our life. It should, he should be a part of our budget. He should be a part of our calendar. He should be a part of our fun. He should be a part of our hard times, right? Like Jesus, we should acknowledge him in every part of our life. And when we do that, it says he will direct our path. Come on, I don't know about you, but I just want to get on the path that God has paid for me. I just want to get on the path that Jesus has for me. I don't want the easy road. Come on. I don't want the necessarily the what the, what this world would call the blessed road. I just want to get on the path in which Jesus has paid for me. Amen.
And when we do that, let me read to you a little bit um, of Proverbs chapter 3 that surrounds this verse that we focused on today. Verse 1 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace will be added to you. Come on, give me some of that. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Verse 7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth. And with the first fruits of all your produce, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof or correction. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom, the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than the gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. Here the writer of Proverbs is referring to wisdom as a lady, right? And all the women say, Amen. That's right. Wisdom represented by a woman. But uh, lady wisdom is referenced here. And it says, She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. And the wisdom of the Lord isn't just simply from reading your Bible and coming to church. That's part of it. It's about receiving the love of Christ. That's step one, right? Falling in love with Jesus, right? Getting to know and living by the Spirit of God, right? Then making a decision to fully trust God by by devoting your life to knowing and following Jesus and all of His teachings. And when you do that, you will gain wisdom, heavenly wisdom, and God will begin to direct your paths. So, I'm running out of time here. I wish I had more time to... Uh, tell some stories, but we got a chock full of of word this morning. I hope it was an encouragement to you, but I have reminders on me. I got a couple things up here, up here that I keep in my office as times in my life when I was skeptical about how God was going to show up. I was uncertain if he would come through and yet he was always faithful that, that he reminded me time and time again that he is trustworthy that I can trust him with all of my heart, that he's never going to forsake me, he's never going to leave me, and he always knows what's best for me, not just in this life, but in the life that is to come. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He's my Redeemer. He's my Creator. He is my friend. I love Jesus. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your word. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you... Invite us to come to you boldly. That you say, if at any point we want access to our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, that we are to just approach you in this way. That we can talk to you about the little things and the big things. Lord, that you are someone whom we can trust. You're never going to let us down. And Lord, if we truly devote our life to you, you will show us the path. Your word is a lamp to our feet, guiding us step for step and day by day. Thank you, Lord, that you are continuing to just show your faithfulness to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that you'll reveal yourself um, in a fresh way to each of us, that those of us that have a little bit of trust issues when it comes to our faith journey and our relationship with you, Lord, that you would, that through your mercy, you would guide us and help us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray if there's anybody on here that doesn't know how much they love you, that today, Lord, you would overwhelm them with how much you love them. Lord, you'd have people continue to remind them of how much you love them. And Lord, I just pray that each one of us 
can fall more in love with you today. That each of us can take one more step in our journey of faith. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Come on. Thank you so much. Here's my hope. That you would take a step towards trusting Jesus with all your heart. Thank you guys for tuning in. Come back tomorrow for day 18. We are rounding third on our 21 days of prayer. I also encourage you, hey, come to Impact City Church this Sunday. If uh, if you're part of Impact City Church or you're looking for a church home, we're going to be wrapping up our series, Build My Life. I get the opportunity to preach our final installment of that. And we're going to be talking about the things that make a house a home. And not only the, not, that God is not only building the structure of our life, but he's filling it with everything inside too. Come on, join me this Sunday, 9.30 and 11 a.m. God bless.